over to you, Comrade Fred. Good evening, comrades and friends. After Dexter, VJ, and the quest have spoken, I don't think I have much to say. I have only one thing to say, and I will say it at length. Who are we defending our sovereignty from? We are defending our sovereignty from the same people who robbed our sovereignty from us in the first place. Nobody else. In, 18, in December 1884 to April, May 1885, they met in Berlin, in German. representatives of the key European nations of the time, including representatives of the United States, which had just gained this independence in 1776, plus representatives of the Tsar in Russia. No African was present there. They met to take away our sovereignty, to take away the sovereignty of our motherland, Africa. We were one continent, one country. They divided our, our country, Africa, our motherland, Africa, into Bantustans, which they started calling countries. And we have continued to call countries. In that way, they took away our sovereignty. We fought back. We won some partial victories to regain our sovereignty. Again, who were we fighting for our sovereignty? We were fighting the same people who took it away. They were brutal in their war against our sovereignty. As Comrade Vijay indicated, they killed. Those who tried to advance the struggle to regain African sovereignty, they killed them. They overthrew Nkrumah. They killed Patus Rumumba. We can also say they killed Samora Machel. They killed Chris Hani. They killed Amilka Cabral. They killed Gaddafi. They killed Nasser. They killed all who tried to advance the struggle for African sovereignty. Today they are coming back. The same people telling us they want to set up military bases, they want to set up military offices to defend our sovereignty. Really? Our sovereignty? Definitely not our sovereignty. They are advancing something else. The same interest that made us, that made them turn us into Bantustans is what they are trying to advance and defend. They are defending American interests. They are defending French in interests. They are defending British interests. They have never been there, even in the fight against colonialism. They are not there in our fight against neocolonialism. Because it was our fight against them. They can't fight against themselves. Since when did they commit suicide to be on our side against themselves in this country in South Africa who was with us were they with us we know the French history here 
We know the British history here. We know the German history here. We know the American history here. They were against our sovereignty. Even here, we had to fight with them before even the Berlin Conference to defend our sovereignty. Our Zulu ancestors defeated them at the Battle of Insandrwana, defending our sovereignty. The Mau Mau War was about defending our sovereignty. In Zambia, in what is Zambia today, the Bantu son of Zambia today, our people, descendants of the Zulus here, who in Zambia are called the Ngonis, in 1897 to February 1898, they had to fight a war with Cecil Rhodes' army. They had to fight a war with Cecil Rhodes' army that comprised Africans and some Sikhs from India to defend their sovereignty, to defend their minerals. Today, the same descendants of the same people are telling us they are here to defend our sovereignty, to protect us from who? From who? The whole of Southern Africa is littered with mass graves. We have the Kasinga massacre. Even those who tried to free themselves from apartheid brutality to go to Zambia and wage a struggle there, they were followed there and killed. By the same people, with the collaboration with the same people, with the participation of the same people who are today coming to tell us they are here to defend our sovereignty. Let's not deceive ourselves. Let's not allow ourselves to be deceived. What they are here to advance is their interest, economic interest, mainly to do with our minerals. They came here for minerals. They came here for wealth. And for that wealth, for those minerals, they were ready to kill. And indeed, they killed. They are still coming here to set up bases, to set up military offices, again for minerals. Wherever they have got minerals, mineral interests, they always take an army. They have defended their interests, they have advanced their interests with their armies. They are here again. And all the time, they find puppets to recruit from among our people. The slave hunters, many were Africans. They used to hunt their own fellow brothers and sisters for very few pieces of silver, sometimes just cloth. They have come again. They are putting puppets as presidents all over the Bantu stand they have created in Africa. Puppets funded by the same mining corporations. Anglo-American today is still creating puppets. We know Anglo-American is an offspring of the British South African company. That colonized my country, the, the so-called Bantusan way, which I call my country, Zambia. The first colonizer of Zambia was Cecil Rhodes and his company. That was the first colonizer, not the British government. From 1891, six years after the Berlin Conference, to 1924, Zambia, the territory called Zambia today, the Bantusan called Zambia today, was ruled by Cecil Rhodes and his company, mining company. For 33 years, we were ruled by a mining company. Later on, that company of BSA, of Cecil Rhodes, was sold to Oppenheimer to become Anglo. Today, Anglo has got a foundation, the Brentes Foundation, that is funding puppets to become presidents of our countries, to become rulers of our countries. And the African people are being made to vote for them. They are funding puppets here in South Africa. 
They are funding puppets in Zimbabwe, in Zambia, in Malawi, in Tanzania, in Uganda, in Kenya. And who is at the head of this uh, Anglo-American Corporation Foundation, the Brentes Foundation, with a chairperson? They have got another puppet, a former president of the great country, of the great Bantustan of Nigeria, Obasanjo. They are creating even foundations to establish new leaders. They want to pick them from a very early age. They take the best brains of our young people under the leadership programs, the Mandela Foundation, to train leaders under the open society and so on. Again, to advance their interests. But these are the same people who are coming to protect, to defend our sovereignty. From who? From the Chinese? From the Russians? Is that possible? Are we threatened by the Chinese in terms of national sovereignty? Are we threatened by the Russians from national uh, in terms of national sovereignty? Who are they protecting us from? And they don't go where there are no minerals. Their focus is where there are strategic minerals. Today their focus is on DRC. A country they have never given a peace. A Bantustan they have never given a peace. Since Leopold II set foot on that territory to take slaves, to take our ivory, to take our minerals, to take our timber, DRC has never known peace. His sovereignty has been always and always threatened by the same people. The Belgians, the French, the Americans, and so on. Today, even the Israelis have joined. For what? Minerals. They don't care about the Congolese people. They are dying every day. With the arms, the same people supply and manufacture. For how long? 500, six years, 600 years, they have been doing the same thing to us. Are we going to let them continue to do so? It gets dark sometimes. But the morning comes. Our morning must come. Wherever there is a crucifixion, there must be a resurrection. Our resurrection must come. When you go to sleep, there is time to rise. Our time to rise has come. We have inspiration. We have Chrissy Honey. We have Jos Lovo. We have Amuka Cabral. We have Patrice Rumumba. We have Nkuruma. We have Thomas Sankara. And many others to look up to for inspiration, for courage, for determination, and for the light to see where we are going. Thank you very much.